What is up, IDP Army and Nerd Herd? It's your boy, Jordan Reigns, back again for a second episode of In My Defense, the premier IDP Dynasty show on YouTube for the nerds. How are you guys doing today? Glad to be back with you today, and guys and gals. I'm happy to be back with you. We've finished eight weeks of the season so far. It's been kind of crazy. Um, yeah, the first episode, you know, we kind of went through the first four weeks of the season, kind of broke down the season through, you know, the lens of the leaderboard, the injuries, some news, trending players. And we're going to do the same thing with this episode. We're going to talk about um, all the guys who've been doing well, all the guys who have maybe struggled for the past few weeks. We're just, you know, going to get an update on how the season's been going from a dynasty's perspective. So, yeah, I'm happy to be back here with you guys for the nerds, giving you guys this content. Um, as always, you know, subscribe you know, comment, always happy to interact, help you guys out. Um, hit me up on the Twitter verse at 50 shades of drunk. I try to answer any and all questions that, you know, I can on there interacting with the, the dynasty community. So yeah, I'm happy to be here with you guys. Um, like I said, we're going to pretty much do the same format as last time. Uh, I want to preface everything by saying, you know, dynasty nerds has adopted the, uh, default scoring of IDP one, two, three, um, which, you know, essentially is one, two, three point plays. Go ch just check out my uh, Twitter. It's my pinned tweet. You can read the article myself and John Glosser put together for the nerds breaking down IDP one, two, three scoring. But essentially quarterback hits and assisted tackles are one point. Two point plays are tackles for lost solo tackles. Uh, three point plays where you're getting into more of your disruptive plays, uh, you know, your forced fumbles, your pass deflections, fumble recoveries, block kicks, things of that nature. Those are three points. And then you have six point plays, which are your interceptions your sacks and then your idp touchdowns um, and that's all like i said broken down go to my twitter and it should be my pinned tweet and just you know catch up read on it if you guys are in a league that has kind of you're not really sure about the scoring or you want to update your idp score I, you know it's what we recommend and it's, it's a pretty good system so that being said when we look at the leaderboard which we will do here shortly um you know all the scores are going to be reflective of that scoring system so let's go ahead and uh Let's jump into the leaderboards here. We're going to start with the defensive line leaderboard. Um, right now, the top of the leaderboard is TJ Watt, 144 points. Second is Miles Garrett, 139. Third is Aaron Donald at 136. Fourth, Brandon Graham, 126. Khalil Mack coming in, 122. Stefan Tuat, 112. Zadarius Smith, 112 as well. Jason Pierre-Paul, 112 points as well. Alden Smith, 108. Shaq Barrett, 105. Akeem Hicks, 101. Calais Campbell with a round 100. Emmanuel Ogba with 99. And then Bradley Chubb with 98 points. Um, just to kind of give you a little frame of reference if you guys missed the last episode. At that point in time, after week four, Zadarius Smith was the leader at number one. Miles Garrett was still at number two, so his he hasn't moved a lot. Um, big movers. T.J. Watt has gone up to the top of the leaderboard. He's gone up about five spots. Interesting thing about T.J. Watt, um, he's played one less game than everybody on this list, except for Zadarius and uh, Stefan Tua. Uh, they both, you know, have the same bye week. They're both Steelers. But it's interesting that he is leading the board right now for defensive line players. Um, it's impressive, you know, with one less game under his belt than anybody else. Uh, just reaffirms everything that I've ever thought and said or spoken about T.J. Watt. If you follow me or know anything about me, you know I'm a huge T.J. Watt fan. I think he's probably the, you know, it's debatable, but he's, in contention for the 101 overall in IDP, um, in IDP, in my opinion. Uh, so he's gone up several spots uh, impressively. Aaron Donald's come up a little bit. Uh, Grady Jarrett no longer a leader at, at this point in time. He's dropped off a little bit. Joey Bosa as well. Um, DeForest Buckner, Carl Lawson, those were some of the guys that were on earlier in the season. But as the season has progressed, they've fallen off. You have some new guys on this list, like I said, including uh, Jason Pierre-Paul. Um, Emmanuel Ogba, impressive run he's been having. I believe he's on his fifth week straight with a sack. Um, he also had a, a bye week as well, so it's good to see him on this list. Uh, that That's some encouraging stuff there. Um, so there's a couple of players on this list I want to highlight. Like I already said TJ Watt, you know, the reason he is so high, even though he has missed some time, is the impact plays. Um, you know, an IDP 1-2-3 scoring, if you guys, you know, read the article, you know what I'm talking about when I say an impact play. An impact play is any uh, score that's over, you know, a one or a two point play. So that's going to be your tackles for loss, um, your pass deflections, your forced fumbles, interceptions, touchdowns, all those plays. Um, it's interesting, you know, want to want to 
highlight quickly that when I'm doing impact plays for defensive linemen, I do not include sacks as the impact plays. Those are still more than a three-point play, but I don't include those because those are kind of, I consider those part of the baseline for the position. I mean, most of you want you know that to be part of it. So when I look for impact plays in the defensive line, I'm looking for things outside of sacks. Now, when I talk about impact plays under a linebacker or a defensive back, I will be including sacks as part of their impact play. So when I say impact plays for TJ Watt, 17, that means he has had 17 plays scoring more than, you know, a tackle. Um, and none of those are sacks. Those are all tackles for loss, forced fumbles, interceptions, um, things of that nature. And actually just to kind of highlight, you know, all the things that he does bring to the table, you know, he's got, he leads the league right now, 13 tackles for loss. I mean, that's huge right there, right? There's 13 impact plays. He has an interception and three pass deflections. There's four more as well. So that's not even counting his sacks. Those are all the points he's getting that are, you know, those are those are plays you want for your defensive lineman. Um, so kudos to him. That's part of the reason he's at the top of this board is because every week you can count on TJ Watt almost every single week for at least one impact play on top of the sacks and the tackles that you're going to get, you know, pretty much weekly. Um, the next player I do want to highlight who is on this list who wasn't on it last time Khalil Mack. Uh, I've not been, I've been a little bearish on Khalil Mack over the past couple of seasons, just because, you know, if you go look at what he did when he was with the Raiders, I mean, Khalil Mack was a, a 50, I, you know, a 50, a 50 and 14 guy, you know, a 60 and 14 guy. What I, what I mean by that is, you know, he was at least 50 or 60 tackles um, and 14 sacks every year when he was with the Raiders. When he came over to the Bears, he has not put up those same prolific numbers. He has still been very disruptive. He's still been good for the team. But his sack numbers have dipped since he's come, and his tackle numbers have dipped across the board since he's been with the Bears. However, this season seems to be kind of getting back to his old ways. Um, his remain disruptive, 15 impact plays through the first eight weeks, uh, six and a half sacks, which paces T.J. Watt, um, and 20 tackles. So he's got five less tackles than T.J. Watt, a few less impact plays, but the sacks are there. Um, it's good to see him kind of putting himself back in the IDP conversation, um, you know, as a as a player who is a big name, but also is producing with that, you know, a, a perfect example of a player who has a big name, Jadavian Clowney, who has never been an IDP, IDP producer. And honestly, I mean, I think he has fairly questionable NFL level production. And I think that that's it's kind of becoming a running punchline in the NFL that Jadavian Clowney is. I mean, he's a punchline. If you watched the game last week when they uh, the Titans were playing the Bengals, uh, he had, I mean, he literally had his arms wrapped around uh, Joe Burrow, clean sack, free, free rush, and he just did not take him down. It was one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. He just cannot get a sack to save his life. Um, and it's because, like I said, it's becoming a punchline. I don't know if anyone listens to around the NFL podcast, but they – we're throwing mad shade at him this last week on uh, their Sunday pod. And I mean, he's all he anyway, don't want to get too far in the weeds there, but Khalil Mack has been one of those players the last couple of seasons where it's been like the name value and what he actually brings to your team. The upside wasn't there, um, but it's good to see that that is those, those tides are changing. So Khalil Mack trending in the right direction, still going to be, I believe on the other side of right at 30 this next year, but the production, I, I, this is a good thing. Overall, what I'm saying is it's good to see Khalil Mack up here. Uh, his dynasty value is definitely trending up and not down as it has been for a while. So good to see him on that list. Um, Stefan Tua as well. He's a, a you know fun interior lineman outperforming Cam Hayward right now. Uh, actually, Cameron Hayward did get a little banged up this last week. They think he's going to be back to play, though. But um, it's good to see two Steelers on that list for your leaderboard. Um, guys, like I said, check out the article as well. There will be an article on Dynasty Nerds and our social media will be putting out these leaderboards. So you can take a little bit of a, you can take a look at those in various spots um, on our website and our, through our social media. So I'm going to go ahead now and transition to the leaderboard for the linebackers. So um, before we go into who is on the top of the list, well, I'll just read them off now. Um, right now, number one overall linebacker, IDP one, two, three scoring, Devin White, 177 points. And you have Blake Martinez, 171, Roquan Smith, 162, Bobby Wagner, 152, 
Novante David, 149. Jalen Smith, 147. Eric Kendricks, 145. Deion Jones, 138. Zach Cunningham, 135. Patrick Queen, 134. Fred Warner, 130. BJ Goodson, 128. Jerome Baker, 123. And Jayon Brown with 121 points. Um, just to kind of give you an idea of how things have moved around a little bit. Uh, at, the, at this point, four weeks ago, when we did our original you know, first quarter of the season review, Blake Martinez was number one. He has dropped one spot. Uh, he had 93 points at that time, 171 now. Uh, Devin Bush at that time was – or Devin Bush. Devin White at that time was number 10. He's now the number one linebacker on the season. Uh, Levante David was number two. He's dropped a couple of spots. But, um, you know, it's a lot of the usual suspects here. Bobby Wagner was on the original list. Eric Kendricks was on the original list. A lot of the same guys are trending and holding their spots. Some guys who have fallen out of the top 12 here or 14 here. Um, we have uh, Miles Jack. That's due to injury. <clears throat> John Bostic was in the top there for a while. He has uh, slowed down a little bit as the season's gone on. Um, who else are we missing from this? Josie Jewell. He had that one big pop game, really helped him those first few weeks, put his name in the in the hat, but he's kind of trailed off a little bit here. Demario Davis, part of that is due to the fact that the Saints have had a few games where they have not played a lot of defensive snaps. So his point uh, point getting you know upside hasn't really been there. The opportunities haven't necessarily been there for him, and they did have a bye week, I believe. Uh, yeah, Saints had a bye, so he um, he hasn't necessarily been on the field for every game either. So he's kind of fallen off. Some guys who've moved up and you know thrown their hat in the ring. Uh, B.J. Goodson, kind of a surprise right now with the Browns uh, playing. Essentially, he's their starting linebacker and the one they trust the most. I know a lot of people coming to the season had a lot of hope in Mac Wilson. Um, B.J. Goodson has kind of taken that job and held on to it. Um, these other guys are kind of coming in and out. Taki Taki, Wilson. Um, uh, there's some. There's another guy there. His name eludes me at the moment, but it's Goodson. Goodson's the player that you want right now. He's you know, I don't know if this is going to hold, but right now, this season, Goodson has been a rock solid linebacker for you. And he didn't cost anything. He's probably, you probably picked him up off your waiver wires. Um, any other big movers? We have Patrick Queen's gone down just a couple of spots, but still firmly in the top 10. Um, yeah. Some, you know, some of the guys you don't see here maybe will tell you more than the guys you do see here. But, I uh, want to quickly, again, highlight Devin White's performance over these past few weeks. I mean, he's the number one linebacker on the season, 18 impact plays. Again, when I talk about linebackers and I talk about impact plays, sacks are included in that. This will blow your mind. Um, five sacks over the past three games for Devin White. He has five sacks on the season, one this last week, a three-sack game two weeks ago, and then the previous week he had a sack. So he's really uh, – he's giving you some some high leverage snaps, some high equity play out here. Um, on top of that, he's on, right on the verge of 70 tackles right now at this point in the season. He has 68. So, I mean, Devin White is – he's everything that a lot of people last year coming into the league thought he was. Um, you know, I've, I've said it before. I That was, you know, my mistake to – he was a guy I was a little bit – I let's see. How can I put this the right way? I thought the big plays were more of an outlier. I didn't think they would be such a regular occurrence for Devin White. Um, he's proven me wrong to start the season here. I mean, like I said, 18 impact plays speak for itself. He's going to blow. He's, he has a very, very good chance to finish the season as the number one linebacker overall. I uh, had an interesting little debate, or I put a, a poll out on Twitter today. You guys may have seen it come across the uh, Dynasty Nerds Twitter channel or timeline asking, you know, people who do they who would they rather have as their linebacker one right now in Dynasty, Devin White or Darius Leonard? Uh, last I checked that poll, it was 54% still want Darius Leonard. But for Devin White to even have such a high number uh, right on Leonard's tail, uh, it's, it's interesting. You know, things change quickly in fantasy football. So you know, if somebody's out there still a little undervaluing Devin White or maybe don't realize necessarily kind of what he's doing and pacing for, I know it's just one season right now, but he's – putting up, you know, similar-ish numbers to what we wanted from Darius Leonard. So, he uh he could throw his name in the uh into the 1 over 101 overall for IDP players in the coming year. We'll have to see how that uh, shakes out. Probably run that poll again after the season, probably closer to February, and I'm interested to see if the results uh are the same as they are now halfway through the current season. Um so, Let's go ahead and move on from the linebacker leaderboard. 
Um, you know, like I said, it's kind of the usual suspects, Jalen Smith, Blake Martinez, Roquan Smith, Devin White, all these guys are in the, uh, the consensus, uh, for dynasty nerds right now, as far as linebackers are concerned, they're all in the consensus top, um, 10 fairly by a fairly good margin as well. Um, if you guys haven't checked out Dynasty Nerds, uh, the new GM tool, it's super awesome. Go over there. Uh, does not have the uh, portfolio yet to where we have the IDP players in there, but we are working on that. That'll be that's in the works. So, but uh, really cool tool. I I love using it. You guys should all be using it as well. Such an awesome thing that the Nerds team has put together. A lot of hard work going on over there behind the scenes. So, shout out to the Nerds. All right, so let's go ahead and finish off the leaderboards. Let's take a look at who the top defensive backs are through eight weeks of the season. Here we go. So, number one overall defensive back right now, Buda Baker, 163 points. Number two, Jordan Poyer with 151. Three, Malcolm Butler, 142. Pierre Desir, 137. Jesse Bates, 135. Carlton Davis, 134. Jeremy Chin, 132. Trevon Diggs, 130. Marlon Humphreys, 129. Rodney McLeod, 124. Daniel Sorensen, 122. Brian Poole, 121. Justin Simmons, 118. And Marcus May with 115. Um, honestly, the, you know, don't want to bury the lead. I mean, he would be mad if I did at Buda Baker. Uh, Buda Baker is playing his best football of his career easily. Um, on top of the fact that he's one of the best tacklers, has one of the safest tackle floors in the NFL at any position. Um, I think he had this, he may, may have led the league in tackles last year. He was top three for total tackles last season, which should l tell you everything you know about his floor. But on top of that, this season, Buda Baker has been having some impact play, something he wasn't really known for coming into the season. Um, he had his first two sacks or he had his first two interceptions this last in the, over the last four weeks, um, which was awesome. And back to back games, he's had two sacks over the past, uh, over the past four weeks. He's missed a game over the past couple of weeks, and he still finished as over the last four weeks as the number one scorer in IDP uh, one, two, three over the last three weeks. Um, he's managed to finish overall number one defensive back uh, in two of those three weeks, uh, which coming back to Devin White, I forgot to mention this. He finished as the number one overall guy two weeks over the last uh, four weeks for you. So between weeks four and eight, Devin White and Buda Baker, who are currently sitting at number one, have put up the number one overall finish back to back weeks. Uh, pretty rare occurrence for that to happen at any position in IDP, unless it's basically Patrick Mahomes or somebody having an MVP caliber type season in IDP or in fantasy in general. I mean, Christian McCaffrey is the kind of player you could see repeating a number one overall performance. Dalvin Cook maybe can do that. We've seen Patrick Mahomes do it. We've seen certain players do that. But to, to be able to put your name in that kind of realm in back-to-back -back weeks on either side of the ball, that that's incredible. So coming back to Buda Baker, like I said, he has missed a game, you know, and he still is the number one guy through eight weeks on the season by over a 10-point margin from the number two guy and over a 20-point margin from the third guy with missing a game. 59 tackles, 12 impact plays. Buda Baker is trending up, up, up. He has officially, I'll tell you guys this, I did my last uh, Dynasty Nerds uh, rankings up, uh, update, and I moved him ahead of um, Adams, Jamal Adams, who I'm huge. I'm a Jamal Adams stan, but Buda Baker has such a solid floor knowing that he can put up over 120 tackles at the drop of a hat and he's showing himself to be that dynamic kind of playmaker, and they're using him differently than they have in the past. Um, he's number one for me now. So Buda Baker takes, takes the cake right now, leading the league. He looks like he's going to be the number one defensive back finisher. All right, I think I've talked enough about Buda Baker. Uh, if you guys have him, you know what I'm talking about. Jordan Poyer, number two. Uh, you know, he's kind of a, one of the most solid guys in the league, um, veteran. Kind of sucks that uh, Harrison Smith is not on this list. He's struggled this year, but we'll, we'll get to him a little bit later in the show, different segment. Um, other player I do want to highlight on the leaderboard quickly is Jesse Bates. Probably the most unsexy name at defensive back in the league, but he is currently one of the better safeties in the league. Uh, 57 tackles, 13 impact plays. A lot of those are passes defended, but he's fairly good at pass defense. I believe, I think he has 10 on the season right now. Let me double check that really fast for you guys. I'm going to bet that. But I believe he has 10. Yeah, he has 10. He has the 
fourth most pass deflections in the league at the defensive back position. Carlton Davis, James Bradbury, and Denzel Ward are the only players with more pass deflections than him right now um, at the defensive back position. And Carlton Davis and James Bradbury are getting a lot of love in the media right now. Um, you know, people love James Bradbury. Even people that only talk offensive football know who James Bradbury is. Right? I need to shut down corner. I know, you know, you got to fade wide receiver so and so, blah, blah, blah. You know, Carlton Davis, he's blowing people out of the water. Four interceptions. I mean, give me, come on. I mean, what's not to love about that? But uh, Jesse Bates, two interceptions as well. He's, he's throwing his hat in the ring as one of the guys that you guys need to be paying attention to going forward. He's got the tackle floor, 100 tackles uh, the last two seasons. Uh, like I said, the impact plays are up tw- uh, 10, 13 through the first eight weeks. I mean, that's pacing for 26 impact plays. That's huge. You know, if, if he can tack that on to the fact that he's pacing for 110 tackles again, I mean, he's going to finish in the top five pretty, pretty easily. And he plays a position you want, which is safety. Um, I know we do have some corners in this top area here, Malcolm Butler being one in particular, Pierre Desir. Um, that's not necessarily something you're looking to count on. Now, that being said, Malcolm Butler does have the third most solo tackles at the uh, defensive back position with 41, which is awesome. Uh, kind of reminiscent of Logan Ryan, who was there last year. Um, so he's definitely a player that shouldn't be on your waivers or shouldn't be undervalued by any means. But Malcolm Butler getting out there a little bit in age. I don't know if this is going to be a, a role that he's going to hold on to either. You know, that Titans team seems to churn players in and out pretty quickly so he may move on next year but if you manage to get malcolm butler um just as an aside here he's the third player on this list he's doing very well this season so all right so that's pretty much that's both the that's all three of the leaderboards at this moment um like i said guys hop on the site uh, check out the article that i wrote which will kind of mirror everything that i'm saying here maybe have a little bit more detail maybe a little less just depending on what you're looking at how you're looking at it um things of that nature but we're going to now transition into the injury segment. Um, not the part that I'm necessarily looking forward to the most because there are some injuries that are not great. But let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Um, first, we'll get some updates on some of the guys from the previous round. You know, Jamal Adams had his groin injury. He got uh, hurt the third week of the season this year. Uh, he missed basically this entire net last quarter. He didn't play a single game in the last four weeks. That really hurt your teams a lot. Um, you know, you drafted him probably reaching a little bit. At the, you know, as a as top player, his position has only been on your team two weeks. Left the game in week three, but he's due to be back this week. So you really have to hope that he is the same player he was when he was on the field early, when he was you know getting the sacks, getting the tackles, getting being disruptive. That's who Jamal Adams is, though. So we're looking forward to him coming back. Um, you know, he did practice this last week. He had the game time decision that was in week eight, but they ended up holding him out. So we're hoping he's back week nine this upcoming week against the Buffalo Bills. So he was banged up this last quarter. Darius Leonard was also banged up this last quarter. He, he, you know, was injured in week four. He sat out week five, week six, had a bye in week seven. So we haven't seen Darius Leonard for three weeks. That week he got hurt was week four. That was, you know, last in the, the end of last quarter. He did come back in uh, this week finally, and he did perform very well, 28 points. He looks to be back to where he should be. So that's good. That's just an, an update on uh, Darius Leonard there for you. Um, let's see who are some of the other bigger injuries this quarter. Mm, Jabril Peppers was banged up, but he has since recovered. Um, he's actually trending up since he's come back from his injury. Matt Milano, uh, here's a guy I definitely want to hit on. Matt Milano had a pectoral injury, um, which ended up causing him to miss a game. And then since he's been back the last two weeks, he's been playing a limited snap count, which is not something you want to see. That maybe means he's not healed up the way they want. That Buffalo defense does not look as good without Matt Milano. They've been, I mean, they've been hurting. They've missed Matt Milano. Let's just put it that way. It's not the same defense without him. He's one of the more unique linebackers in the league, one of the more underrated linebackers in the league, and just his skill set. His sideline to sideline speed, blitzing, coverage. I mean, he's just very good, and that defense has suffered without him. He's been out there a little bit, like I said, the last two weeks since week seven, but uh, he's definitely not the same. So they're hurting right now. So he's definitely a guy you're going to want to monitor. Um, play him at your own risk. He's still playing minimal snaps, like I said, so we'll have to watch that. Miles Jack, that injury, which I believe we mentioned on the last show, but the 
the ankle injury. He came back, re-injured it. I'm expecting him to miss some time. Um, you know, he he injured it in week four, sat out week five, suited up in week six, re-injured it, missed week seven. Uh, he hasn't been misplaced on the IR, but I don't know when he's coming back, guys. So that's not great. Um, other injuries we need to talk about quickly. Josh Allen of the Jacksonville Jaguars has been suffering with, you know, banged up knee situation. He's kind of been, he you know, was randomly didn't play a week. He's missed two weeks, I believe, already this season um, just for this l- l- nagging knee injury. So that's really hampered his production this season, unfortunately. Not what you want to see out of him. Um, you know, another guy that you kind of are playing at your own risk at this point because at any moment he could be come out of the game. Shaq Griffin, cornerback for the Seahawks, um, has a hamstring injury. He was out this last week. I'm not sure if he's going to be playing going forward. He was having a good start to the season, well, good in Friday P, a.k.a. not a great uh, defensive back currently in the NFL, kind of getting torched a little bit. But like I said, that's what we want for IDP. Um, and Quan Alexander, high ankle sprain. Story of Quan Alexander's life is injury. Uh, he m- was injured in week five. He missed week six, seven, and eight. Uh, Dre Greenlaw has been subbing in for him, playing very well. Uh, he you know, traditionally has played well last season when he did come in for Quan Alexander. So I don't know when Quan Alexander is going to be back healthy. Um, I don't know. You know, and we'll talk about him soon again in a different segment about Quan Alexander. There's there's a whole other layer to Quan Alexander. But before we get into that, do some quick IR updates. Christian Kirksey still on the IR. Don't know when he's coming off. Haven't had any sort of information about that. Um, so just monitor that right now. You don't want to touch anybody in Green Bay right now, long term, short term. I mean, if you're desperate, maybe look for a body, but. I don't want to mess with anybody in Green Bay except Christian Kirksey until he comes off the IR. Um, Nate Gary was put on the IR, short-term IR. don't know how long he's going to be on it, but he uh, did have an Achilles injury. So we all know Achilles injuries, I mean, not necessarily the kiss of death, but definitely not what you're looking for. And then Leighton Van Der Esch, this is actually a bit of good news, was elevated from the IR Uh uh, right after, I believe right around week six or seven. Um, and he's been playing really good. We'll talk about him in the trending up section here in a minute. All right. And then the last uh, bit of injuries are the guys that went out for the season. Um, so we did have some players go out for the season. This last quarter, the last four weeks, we had Daniil Hunter. They finally called it season ending surgery, herniated disc in his neck. We had the rumors, the rumblings, things weren't looking good. Second opinion. Da, 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 da. Well, it's his season's over. He never got to see the field this year. He's hurt. So no Daniel Hunter, neck injury. You know, you can't, you can't, you just got to hold him. I mean, you can't really sell him in his lowest, uh, lowest value. You could, but I don't really know if that's not advisable. Um, package him up maybe with some people if you want to just get out from under that. I don't know if this is going to be a lingering thing or not. You know, it's a neck injury. Just as scary as it sounds, probably. Uh, Chandler Jones, Torres bicep, week five, um, placed on season ending IR, goes out this season, you know, 11 tackles and a sack to his name, not what you were looking for. Far cry from what he was putting up in 2019. He had 19 sacks, led the league in forced fumbles, a uh, ton of tackles for loss. I mean, he was all over the place last year, and he just did not look good this year, and fortunately, he never got a chance to get it right, so... You know, in my mind, it hurts his dynasty value a good bit, you know, because you're losing this whole season and he is a little bit older. Uh, he's not dead in the water. I expect him to come back and play. But, you know, again, you're kind of playing with fire when you get these kind of older pass rushers, like, you know, all of J.J. Watt that are maybe a little banged up from time to time. And it just this might end up being a thing. I don't know. But his overall Chandler Jones's overall dynasty value has definitely taken a dip. Um, hopefully you were able to if you moved on you know, earlier in the off season, whenever things weren't looking right, if you still have him, you know, my suggestion is try to maybe move away from him. Honestly, um, Devin Bush, this one sucked torn ACL in week six done for the season. Um, you know, that's generally a nine month recovery. So he should be, you know, in rehab and good to go to start 2021, but that's a big blow. He wasn't crushing this year. Um, 
you know, overall, the Steelers defense was very, very productive. One of the best uh, in the league right now. If it is the best in the league right now. So a lot of mouths to feed, a lot of, a lot of guys out there doing a lot of work. So Devin Bush, you know, wasn't necessarily getting the prolific numbers that he started the season out with last year. It's interesting, though, when I say that, you know, Devin White, similar situation on a team with a lot of really good players as well, and he's doing well. So maybe there's something to worry about there with Devin Bush. I don't know. I don't think the five-week sample size that we got was enough in week six when he did go out. He had just had a sack. He was basically pacing for his best game of the season. So I still think he's Devin Bush. Um, you know, he's going to be a top 10, top 12 linebacker going into next season, you know, even coming off the injury. Um, then also we lost Landon Collins this quarter, guys. This is another big one, guys and gals. Uh, Washington football team, captains, torn ACL, uh, or not ACL, Achilles injury, week seven. Um that's going to be tough to recover from. Like I said, my talked about Gary, you know, uh, Achilles injury, not one of the ones you want, but Landon Collins is one of the best athletes in the league. Um, and I, you know, if anybody can come back from this, uh, it's going to be him and playing the safety position. I think he's going to be able to, I think he's going to be fine coming into this next year, but that's a pretty big look, pretty big blow to a guy that uh, is consensus top 10 defensive back, honestly consensus top five defensive back. I don't know where he's going to end up shuffling around over the summer, um, check our rankings, you know, see how everybody's feeling about that. You guys can look under a consensus tab or you can look by actual ranker. So you can look at my rankings versus Eric's rankings versus John's rankings versus anybody else who has their uh, IDP rankings updated at the time. So check those out on the site. So that segment went longer than I wanted it to. Um, injuries, never fun. But that's the name of the fantasy season is navigating the ebbs and flows, the things that we did not expect, um, you know, and kind of getting through that. So, you know, these guys are those are some big names I just lifted off there, too, that we just lost for the season. I mean, Daniel Hunter. Um, excuse me, Devin Bush, Landon Collins, I mean, Chandler Jones, these are all top end players at their position. But that just means new guys are up and coming. You know, the more you're aware of your league, the more you're aware of the NFL, the league itself, and players trending up, down, moving all around, um, you're going to be, you know, able to put yourself in a position to win. Next segment, we're going to talk about players on the move. We did have the trade deadline that came recently. Um, we did have a few players, IDP relevant guys, go some spots, move around. Um, we'll start with the most boring of the boring. Vic Beasley was waived uh, today, today or yesterday, by the Titans. He's basically not even worth talking about past that conversation. Um, Carlos Dunlop, this is an interesting one. He was a d little bit disgruntled. He seems to have been pushed out of the current Bengals regime. They're going younger. They're trying their new guys. They have their guys. They're drafting. They're putting things in place for the future, yada, yada, yada. Carlos Dunlop has been, you know, a staple of that team for a long time, and he just wasn't being appreciated, wasn't getting played, wasn't getting used, and he knows he's a 30-year-old pass rusher. There's only so many snaps he's got left in the NFL. There's only so much time he has left to get to where he wants to get, do what he wants to do. He, you know, put something on social media, something happens, something else happens, but a boom, but a bing, and now he is a Seattle Seahawk. Great move for him, the player. Great move for Seattle, the team. They get a veteran pass rusher, a guy that – should be able to get up to speed fairly quickly. Um, and he's good at his job. You know, he came on hot in the last season. I still think he's got the juice. I think they were just messing around too much this year with the Bengals. They got, like I said, some young guys. They want to do some new schemes. You know, Carl Dunlap, he's in a spot now where he's going to be the alpha dog. He's The snaps are not going to be a, a question. I, mean, I don't think LJ Collier is going to push him out or Benson Mayo or whoever is up there. Carlos Dunlap is now the pass rusher you want on the Seattle Seahawks. Um, and if you're, you know, struggling right now with some depth, you know, moving into the playoff time of the year. I mean, you know he's got fresh legs because they haven't been using him as much in the Bengals. So good move there for Carlos Dunlap and for your IDP teams. Uh, another pass rusher that made a move between since last time we spoke um, over this last quarter, Yannick Ngakwe. Um, you know, his whole issue with the Jacksonville Jaguars, terrible organization, finally got out of there, went to Minnesota better organization, a uh, good enough organization to understand that they aren't going to win this year said Yannick, you know, we're going to get rid of you while we can. They trade Yannick to the Baltimore Ravens over both teams by week. So you don't miss any time with Yannick. 
His first week with the team, he didn't do much. I think he had a tackle. But Yannick Ngakwe is one of the best pass rushers in the NFL, and he is one of the most consistent, maybe not the highest ceiling, but most consistent defensive linemen you can play in IDP. Um, right now, he has a lot of tackles for loss in the NFL uh, compared to a lot of players at the defensive line position. Uh, I believe he's close to leading the pack. Maybe it's a little lower than I thought. Um yeah, not quite as many as I thought he had, but he's, you know, he's Yannick. Um, Baltimore, they were pursuing him even before he went to Minnesota. There were rumors that he would been in talks with Baltimore or that maybe getting moved there from Jacksonville. So he ends back up with Calais Campbell. They have history together. They've both had two of their best seasons playing together. So it's a good fit for him uh, and a, a good organization for him to be at finally. And back at Maryland, that's where he played college football. So, I think it's going to be a good situation there. Um, does I'm not moving him rest of season. I'm not moving him in dynasty. I'm not. I'm not moving him at all. Yannick is he's the same player in this organization, in my opinion. If you know, we'll see how the rest of the season goes out. But that's a good move, a positive move. He's got more talent around him now. So in this this Ravens defense, kind of like that Steelers defense, they're kind of, they're for real. So on all levels. And then the final big move, again, interesting enough, you know, talking about Steelers again, um, Avery Williamson came back from the ACL injury, which he had last year for the Jets, played some lights out football um, over the last few weeks for the Jets. Let me see if I can find it here. Since week five, he's been averaging 10 tackles a game um, and the the Pittsburgh Steelers, they lost Evan Bush and they got on the phone with the Jets and said, hey, we need a guy like Avery Williamson. Bada boom, bada bing, goes out, plays a game on Sunday night football, or was that Sunday night football? I don't remember what game it was. Played a game on Sunday and finds out he's going from the worst team in the NFL, one of the most poorly run teams in the NFL, to one of the best teams in the NFL and one of the most well run organizations in the NFL, the Steelers. What up? Welcome to the Steel City, baby. Welcome to that black and yellow. TJ Watt, all my guys, I'm sure they're happy to get a guy like Avery Williamson on the team. Um, you know, there's a little concern that maybe some of the tackles per game, you know, I don't know if he's going to get 10 tackles per game on a better defense with an offense that can sustain drives. But uh, the big playability is still there. The tackle floor, I mean, just as a player himself, that's something he's good at, is still there. Um, and, yeah, the big play upside is all around him. I mean, force fumbles, batted passes, all that. I mean, that's what the Steelers do. So Avery Williamson is in a good spot to produce uh, down the stretch for your team. I don't know. The COVID protocols may keep him out for a week this upcoming week, but um, either way, this this is good. And for dynasty value, Avery Williamson, you know, was basically left for dead last year whenever he tore his ACL. And, you know, it was like, oh, my gosh, I'm obsessed with C.J. Mosley, blah, blah, blah. I mean, Give me a break. Avery Williamson's the guy you want. He's been more productive, essentially. He's basically been just as good for IDP as C.J. Mosley throughout his career. He just doesn't have the big name that C.J. Mosley had or that really, really monster season that C.J. Mosley had. But when you put their numbers game by game up next to each other, I mean, Avery Williamson's about 90% of what C.J. Mosley is for IDP. So <clears throat> take it as you will. All right. I think that's all the players we had that really got moved around IDP purposes. Um, I know Desmond King. I was traded from from the Bolts, the Chargers, uh, to the Titans. Not a huge move for IDP. He had a really good season two or three years ago, but he hasn't really been anything crazy right now. So, all right. Well, next segment, we're going to go to the trending up, trending down players. Um, focusing mostly on the trending up guys, but uh, said earlier, Leighton Vanderesh came back from you know, quickly from his injury over, you know, quick, quickly, I would say it was like they expected it to be not till November and he's been playing two weeks of football and it's only the first week of November. So he came back faster than we expected. I don't know if the injury prone narrative sticks around, made a glass narrative sticks around because I mean, he came back sooner than he was supposed to um, 20 tackles on the season, a sack of forced fumble, you know, a lot of that production has come in the last two weeks, so that's awesome. Good to see uh, his, you know, you remember that year that Darius Leonard came out by storm right on his heels was Leighton Vander Esch and was the second coming of, you know, the next best linebacker ever. 
So still very good if you can get him at an injury discount, if you can weave that narrative of, well, he's going to get hurt again and you can get him a little cheaper, I encourage you to do that. Um, like I said, Avery Williamson, he's trending up. New team, 59 tackles, three pass deflections, and an interception for a guy coming off an ACL tear. That's not bad. Um, again, he was on the Jets, spent a lot of time on the field, but regardless, the numbers are the numbers. Hassan Reddick, this is a fun one. Uh, Hassan Reddick, 26 tackles, five tax, ta- uh, sacks, seven tackles for loss, three pass deflections, and nine quarterback hits. Um, you know, he's really kind of filled that void left behind by Chandler Jones, but honestly, he was doing producing before Chandler Jones was out. Um, been playing some really good football. I believe, you know, so this is a third third or a fourth year breakout from him. Um, I know I had him on a couple of dynasty teams last year, kind of got impatient, got rid of him, but he's doing really well. Um, you know, and week winning performance week seven, just got to give him a little shout out. 11 total tackles, three tackles for loss and a sack 31 points in week seven. I mean, Avery William or not Avery Wilson, Hassan Reddick is playing well. So he's a guy that you will, you can probably acquire really cheap. Um, if you have him on your team, good for you and if he's on your waiver wire you need to pick him up because he i don't think this is going to slow down for this season anyway brian burns i talked about him in the last show again you guys can check the article out you know i have little blurbs written about these guys but trending the right way we've had two games where brian burns has basically started to break out and then something's happened where it's just like it's not happened like i believe what was a week three or four he had a game where he had five tackles a sack a forced fumble all in like 10 minutes and it was like, oh, my gosh, like it's happening. And then he got a concussion, so we didn't get to see the rest of the game. So he had like his best game of the, of the season in like 10 minutes. That was pretty annoying. And there was another week where he had something like that happen, too. He had got a sack home on the, the Saints, which is a pretty tough tough team to get on, home on. Um, I think he got a little banged up in that one, too. Or something happened in that game where the breakout was happening, but it just didn't get there. So if someone's still not buying the Brian Burns hype, I'm telling you that needle is pointing up. And, I mean, it's – it's just go get him like get Brian Burns on your team now. Like you're looking at the future, you know, one of the future better pass rushers in the league, in my opinion, Monta sweat, another guy in that same class from last year, trending up 21 tackles, five sacks, 11 quarterback hits, six tackles for loss, two forced fumbles. And the crazy thing is he did all that in three weeks. Not all that three weeks though, this season, uh, the last three weeks, He's been one of the top, if not the top, I believe he's been the number one defensive lineman over the past three weeks, even though he missed a week. Um, That's what I was trying to get out there. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence, also trending up uh, over the last two weeks. Demarcus Lawrence has seven impact plays, um, five tackles for loss, two forced fumbles, three sacks. That's all in the past four weeks, um, which more than doubles his production from the early part of the season. DL 18 right now through the first eight weeks of the year. Snaps are trending up. Um, he appears to have shaken off the injury. So, yeah, that's good. If you're a Cowboys fan, you love to see that. That pass rush coming coming alive with Alden Smith, with Demarcus Lawrence. Um, you know, Leighton Van Der Esch back healthy. It's good stuff. And last guy I want to kind of highlight as an ascending talent or up and coming or trending the right way is uh, Taylor Rapp. You know, Jordan Fuller went out, but Taylor Rapp, you know, I'm, I'm of the thought that Taylor Rapp would always had this job nailed down. Um, you know, he's just coming back off that injury, 44 tackles on the season, three pass deflections, one tackle for a loss, one interception, a forced fumble. He's playing really good. Um, so he's going to be a guy. He's currently a consensus top 25 defensive back in dynasty nerds dynasty rankings young 22 years old already got a 100 tackle season under his belt um still on his rookie contract taylor Rapp's a guy you you want so don't let don't let anything get you get you down on him even if it, he is you know maybe competing with somebody else on that team i'm of the i'm of the thought process that he's going to beat that player beat that player out even if they bring somebody else into the fold so um, trending down. I don't want to talk about a lot of these, you know, over much on these guys, but there's a couple, uh, Harrison Smith, just not playing well this year. The tackles are not there. Um, you know, he's scored under, under double digits four times through the first seven weeks. He only scored under double digits five times all last year. So that's scary. 
I mean, things just aren't going his way like they have been. So it's unfortunate. Uh, maybe that's some of that's due to Wilson and Kendricks being really good at getting tackles in the middle. Uh, maybe he's losing a step. I don't know. I haven't studied him as in depth as I probably should have this year, but things just are not falling Harrison Smith's way. He's just not producing the way he has in the past. Same situation with Corey Littleton played a hundred percent, 99.9% of his team snaps this year. Um, you know, this is in my article, but in 2002 to 18 and 19 had, it was 120 tack, 120 plus tackles each season and 20 plus impact plays each season. This year, he's currently on pace through eight weeks. Now, this isn't just like, oh, three games. I mean, this is half the season sample size. He's pacing for 91 tackles and get this, seven impact plays, less than a third of the impact plays that we're used to from Corey Littleton over the past two years. So now what you want to see, you know, the scheme is the scheme, I guess, and the scheme in Las Vegas is just not working well for Corey Littleton. Maybe he's in his head a little bit because he's changed teams. Maybe because he got paid. He's an undrafted free agent. Maybe he's just overthinking things. I don't know. You know, I've never been in that situation that he's in, but he's definitely not earning his money this year. He earned it the last two years. So those are the only guys I really want to kind of highlight, you know, bigger names, you know, coming into the season, Corey Littleton was a top 10 linebacker for most people, top 12 Top 15, at least for everybody. Um, you know, he's going to be, he's falling in consensus dynasty rankings everywhere, you know, just because the scheme doesn't seem to be fitting him right. And Harrison Smith, you know, you hate to see it for a guy that you love, but, you know, age and production just not there. He's going to start falling in rankings. Uh, might be time to get out from, it's time to get out from under both of them, probably. Um, buy a low opportunity on Littleton if you believe in him, but I mean, you should be buying like discount bin prices on him. I'm saying that as someone who manages him in the team and I'm just holding because I don't want to sell, you know, to, I don't want to sell him as, as bottom value. So Corey Littleton, you're probably holding for a while. Harrison Smith, you can probably still get something good out of. So that is, you know, guys that are trending up and trending down right now um, in the dynasty world. And then I, I've said earlier, I, you know, kind of want to get a price check from the nerd herd. You know, y'all are playing. If you're listening to the show, watching the show, you're playing in IDP leagues. I kind of want to know your thoughts on the conversation I had earlier, uh, the price check between uh, Darius Leonard and Devin White and Jamal Adams and Buda Baker. What are y'all's thoughts on these players? Who would you take as your number one overall defensive back? Who would you take as your number one overall linebacker leave that in the comments below um i'm interested curious to hear what you guys have to say so this show is going to be a little bit shorter than the last one um as you can tell i'm going to go ahead and get close to wrapping that up check out the whole article on dynasty nerds is a little bit more in depth you know i kind of have my reasoning a little bit behind some of the players i mentioned um the leaderboards will be up there um Subscribe to the channel as always, guys. You know, we are going to be putting a lot of good content on here going forward pretty regularly. I don't know what other shows are in the works, but I would not shock me if the nerds come out and have another great show lined up for the channel to go along with the podcast and along with this, um, as well as the film nerds. So, guys, make sure you're, you know, spread the love too. Don't hide your candle under a rock, you know, under a basket. Tell everyone about the channel, tell everyone about IDP. Tell everyone about IDP123. Tell everyone about the Nerd Herd, which is here behind me. Um, go check out the store. Get yourself some Nerds gear. And yeah, spread the love for Dynasty Fantasy Football everywhere and anywhere you can. I will be back next quarter. At that point, we will basically be getting ready to jump into the postseason. Hopefully, you will have made it to your team's uh, playoffs, your league's playoffs, and hopefully you will have set yourself up to win in those playoffs. Um, all we can do is hope to get there, though. Once we're there, you just kind of have to see how the weeks go. But, yeah, we'll break down, you know, how the season has gone overall when we get there. We'll talk about who we're, you know, should be expecting things from in going down the stretch. Maybe at that point, you know, it'll be deep. You know, your your trades will all probably be closed off for your playoffs. So we'll probably do a little bit of a little bit of a waiver grind there. See if, you know, there's some injuries that we need to address at that point in time. And yeah, follow me, like I said, on Twitter at 50 Shades of Drunk. 
Um, check out my little uh, IDP podcast if you guys want to. Defense Matters. Do weekly IDP rankings over there. Talk about other IDP stuff as well. Different flavor from the nerds. Not all Dynasty related, but all IDP related. So, yeah. Appreciate it. Hope you guys will be back with me next time. Nerd Herd. And, yeah. Good luck. Hope you guys do well in this second or in this third quarter, this upcoming quarter of the season.